Ionic compounds form between metals and non-metals. It's every atom's dream in life to get a full outer shell of electrons. And this is how ionic bonding forms. So metals donate electrons to form cations which have a positive charge. For instance, magnesium will donate two electrons to get a positive charge. And this is how and why it does it. So if we look at magnesium, we can tell by the atomic number that there's 12 protons, which means in a neutral atom, there has to be 12 electrons. So there'll be two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, two in the third shell, which means it's got these two valence electrons here. So it's got a configuration of two, eight, and two. So to get a full outer shell, it's going to want to lose two electrons. And that's exactly what it does. So it loses those two electrons, which gives it a total of 10 electrons. It's still got 12 protons because that number doesn't change, which gives it here an overall charge of plus two because it's got 12 protons, but only 10 electrons. So this means it changes from the magnesium atom into the magnesium ion, Mg two positive because that's its charge. Non-metals on the other hand will accept electrons to form anions which have a negative charge. So if we look at the sulfide ion here it has a two negative charge and this is how it's formed from the sulfur atom. So sulfur has got an atomic number of 16 which means it's got 16 protons so in a neutral atom it will have 16 electrons. So two in the first shell eight on the next shell and six electrons on the outside shell there which are its valence electrons to give it 16 electrons or a two eight and six electron configuration so its protons are 16 its electrons are 16 so it has an overall charge of zero However, to get a full outer shell, it wants to gain two electrons. So it gains the two electrons there to get eight in its outer shell. We now have a total of 18 electrons, which gives the sulfide ion a charge of negative two because it's got an extra two electrons here. So that means the sulfur atom becomes sulfide ion with an S two negative charge and that two negative just represents those extra two electrons there. Great, we can demonstrate this using electron transfer diagrams and this is how ionic bonds form between atoms or I should say ions. So let's have a look at a sodium atom which has an electron config of 281 and here it is here. Now it wants to lose its valence electron. It's in group one, so it wants to lose this electron here. And that's exactly what it does. That electron disappears and it forms a sodium one positive ion. So that atom now becomes sodium ion with a two eight electron configuration. Chlorine atoms, on the other hand, are non-metals and chlorine atoms have a 287 electron configuration so they want to gain one valence electron. Here it comes and now it's got a full outer shell. It's got an extra negative there which means it's formed a chloride ion. Remember with non-metals when it becomes an ion you change the ion to an IDE ending so ide. So it becomes a chloride ion So, this is what will happen if you put sodium with chlorine. The sodium will donate its electron to the chlorine to form sodium ions and chloride ions. And we can demonstrate this in an electron transfer diagram. So here we have our sodium atoms and our chlorine atoms with their electron configurations written underneath. This electron here will move and we demonstrate that with an arrow to this position here, which gives us the sodium 
iron and the chloride iron. These have charges on them now and these are the new electron configurations. Now it's the electrostatic attraction between the anions and the cations which form the strong ionic bond. So you can see here there's a positive charge now on the sodium iron and there's a negative charge on the chloride iron. Now these attract to one another. Positive attracts to negative and this is called electrostatic attraction. So we remember that like repels like so positive and positive will repel, negative and negative will repel, but positive and negative attract to one another. So here we have the formation of the sodium iron by donation of the electron to chlorine to form the chloride ion. This positive and negative will form this crystal lattice structure of positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And this is what a structure looks like. It's this lattice structure when you see it in a crystalline solid. So this is a grain of salt here. And in a solid state, these ions are in these fixed positions. They can't move because of the strong electrostatic attraction. And they're packed into very regular three-dimensional networks of alternating positive and negative ions. And you can see it here, it's very tightly packed. The other important thing to note is that the bonding is not just in one direction. All anions will attract all cations and vice versa. And again, electrostatic attraction is the strong attraction holding this together. In an aqueous or a liquid state, however, the ions are free to move around. So this is what happens if you put salt into some water. These particles will move apart from one another. So the ions are free to move. And the same thing happens if you make or if you melt this. So if you turn it into a liquid, these particles will be able to move. But in a solid state, they are unable to move. Writing ionic formula. It's important when you're writing ionic formula for compounds that the overall charge on the compound is neutral, so it has no overall charge. So when magnesium and chloride form an ion, magnesium has a 2 plus charge and the chloride ion has a 1 negative charge. So if we have 1 magnesium and 2 chlorides, we will get a two positive total charge of magnesium, a two, positive, two negative charge for the chloride ion, so our overall charge is zero. So it means we need one magnesium, which is indicated by no number, and two chloride ions here, which you put a little two next to the chloride. A cross method is an easy way of establishing what charges you need. If you have a look at the valency on the opposite iron, that will tell you how many you need. So for instance, magnesium, there's a one on the chloride, so you need one magnesium. There's a two plus on the magnesium, so you need two chloride ions. So as a summary for the formula of ionic compounds, this is the way you'll see it written. So the compound formula doesn't contain any of the charges on the ions and that's really important that the overall charge of the compound is neutral. So you don't write the charges in here. The little two down here and the little four are important. The two is the number of the brackets applies to everything within inside the brackets gets multiplied by this two. So here the two applies to both the nitrogen and the hydrogen. So I have a total of two nitrogen and I have a total of two times four hydrogens. The four here is just referring to the hydrogen itself. So we've only got four hydrogen atoms for every ammonium unit. Now if you understand how to write ionic compounds, you can stop watching now. But if you're still a little bit confused and you want a bit of revision, please continue watching. 
So this is what happens when sodium and sulfur get together. We've got this sodium and this sodium here, both have got one valence electron that they'd like to get rid of. Now they want to give those to sulfur because sulfur has six in its outside shell and it wants a full outside shell. So they will move over there to give us sodium positive and sulfide two negative. I've got two sodiums that are required to bond with one sulfide ion. So when I look at sodium and sulfide, I've got sodium which has got a one plus charge, sulfide which has got a two negative charge. Remember that the overall charge of the compound must be zero. So if I've got sodium and sulfide, if I have one sodium I'll have a plus one charge, if I have one sulfide I'll have a negative two charge. If I've got two sodiums, I'll have a positive two charge. So this means my charges are balanced. So I need two sodiums for every one sulfide. Positive charge must equal the total negative charge. So I have sodium, I have two of those, and I have sulfide, which I have one. So it's sodium, sulfide, and there's no need to put the one in the formula. So looking at the cross method over here, if I write the one in next to the sodium, just to show you. So it's gonna be sodium sulfide, and we just need to know how many. So if I wanna know how many sulfide they are, I have a look at the valency on the sodium, which is one. So I know I need one sulfide ion, and for the number of sodium, I have a look at the valency here, which is a two. So I put a little two next to the sodium. So I know I need two sodium, and one sulfide. I'll just do two more examples for you. Magnesium nitride, Mg2 plus, N3 negative. So remember the overall charge has to be zero. I've got a plus two and a minus three. So I'm going to need two of these to make a negative six charge and I'm going to need three magnesiums to make a positive six charge. That means positive charge equals negative charge. So I need three magnesiums, so it's Mg3 and two nitrides, so it's N2. Again, with the cross method, if I just have a look here, the number of nitride I need, have a look at the valency on the magnesium, so I need two, and for the number of magnesium, have a look at the valency on the nitride, so I need three of those. Just one last one to show you, ammonium sulfide. And this is about keeping the ammonium in brackets. So when you have a polyatomic iron here, which means several atoms in one iron, you keep these as a group. So I've got ammonium and I've got sulfide. So we just put brackets straight away around the polyatomic iron with the plus on the outside. I've got a one plus charge, two minus charge. I'm going to need two of the ammoniums. So I write it with the ammonium in brackets with a two and the sulfide just gets a one, which you don't need to write. The cross method, make sure this is in brackets. You can clearly see it, there's a one there. So when you write it, you have a one next to the sulfide and you put that two next to the ammonium.